It has been a minute since I've worked on my Sportster 72 and seems tax time has been and gone. I went and bought a shitload of unnecessary parts for the bike. Went out and bought a chain conversion kit. Also bought another cam cover which I'm going to shave down as I think it will give the bike more of an old school look. And I've also bought an oil pressure gauge and a couple other bits and bobs here and there. So I'm going to be doing a little mini series on my Sportster 72 titled Unnecessary Shit for the Sportster. And to kick off this mini series I'm going to be doing the chain conversion kit. So let's get to it. I'm going to start off with removing the exhaust. And the first thing to do is to disconnect the O2 sensors. Here's the one to the rear header. Now the mounting bolts. There's not a lot of room between that brake master cylinder. I have to remove my rear master cylinder to give me enough room to get the sprocket cover off. So now I've got the master cylinder loose, I can just pull it out just enough to enable me to remove the sprocket cover. And when I put the other cam cover on, which I'm going to shave down, I won't be reinstalling this. I'll be getting a different sprocket cover, which will look a hell of a lot better than this big square thing. Now that I have the exhaust removed and the sprocket cover removed, what I'm going to do is jack the bike up so I can take the shock off, these covers and the belt. So to remove the belt, what I have to do is loosen off this bolt securing the bottom mount for the shock using a T50 torque socket and a three quarter wrench. Now using a quarter inch Allen wrench and a half inch wrench to remove the bolt which secures the belt guard. Now to remove the lower belt guard. Now I'm going to remove the lock nut to the belt drive using a quarter of an inch allen head socket. So I just went and bought this socket and it's a 1 and 7 8 inch socket and bloody cost 60 bucks. Can you believe it? This is a left hand thread so righty loosey not righty tidy. So now what I'm going to do is take off my rear wheel. Use a 36mm socket to the rear axle. Alright now to take the belt off. So this is the reason why I've loosened off the shock so I can get this belt off. Now I'm going to reconnect my brake rod. Alrighty, now they fit on the sprocket. The sprocket kit which I got is from TC Bros and it has a 51 rear sprocket and a 22 tooth front sprocket. First off I want to install this spacer and TC Bros provide you with longer sprocket bolts. So I'm just going to apply some blue Loctite to all the threads. With the sprocket you'll notice that there's more of a rounded side and a flat side. You want the flat side going flush against your spacer. Start them off by hand. Now I'm just going to buzz them down with the impact driver, but I'm not going to get it all the way flush because the way I want to torque these down is with a torque wrench. So 
So the way you want to torque these down is in a cross pattern and the manual calls for them to be first torqued down to 60 foot pound. Now they're all torqued down to 60 foot pound. I've just got to adjust the torque wrench to 80 foot pound and then go over them once again. All right, so I'm just going to get a hand reinstalling this back wheel as it's pretty hard to hold all the spaces in place. Now I'm not going to torque down the axle nut just yet because now I'm going to install the front sprocket, then the chain, and then I'll torque everything down when the chain is on. I'm going to apply some red Loctite to the thread. And remembering this is a left hand thread, so lefty tidy. When I whack my chain on, I want to get the maximum adjustment out of the chain, so I'm going to back off these nuts to the axle adjuster. Now to push my wheel all the way forward and tighten the axle nut down so it doesn't slide back. So before I mark where I want to cut, I'm going to throw on my chain slider. And this chain slider is from a company called Sporty Mob and you can find them on Instagram. The reason why I went with the Sporty Mob chain slider over the Tracker Die chain slider is just because of the cost of postage to Australia. On the Tracker Die website, postage was 100 bucks to Australia and with the Sporty Mob, postage was $30 to Australia. Crazy, I know. And I'm gonna need a longer bolt because it doesn't go right through. Unfortunately, the Sporty Mob don't provide a longer bolt, so you're gonna have to source one of them yourself. So I need a bolt which is 45 mil in length, so it'll make it through the other side of the chain slider. All right, that's nice and tight. If you're wondering why you need a chain slider, the purpose is to avoid your chain from rubbing on your passenger peg there. I really don't want to cut it down another link as I think it'll be too short. So there is an incorrect way to cut a chain. Just keep in mind that you want to cut it so there's a roller in the middle. So I'm going to be cutting this one just here and that's why I've moved that point to there. So I'm just going to grind this pin down so it's flush and then I'm just going to hammer it through with a punch. Go. the pin has come through alrighty so as you can see it's overlapping by a little bit but when I pull the wheel back there's going to be plenty of adjustment there so the joiner link which I'll be using is a clip link and not a rivet link just because they're much easier to install the o-rings on so I'm just going to use a socket and some vice grips to try and get the pins to come through. There we go, got it. Now those pins are through the joiner link, I'm going to install this clip link. You want the rounder part to go in the direction of travel. Now I'm gonna remount my rear brake master cylinder. So now I'm just going to tension my chain by screwing in these nuts on the actual adjusters. So to tighten down this nut, what I have to do is apply the foot brake to obviously lock the back wheel up so when I tighten this down it doesn't spin. And the adjustment is 50 foot pounds and remembering it is lefty tidy. Now I'm going to apply some blue Loctite to the threads. And torque these locking bolts down to 90 to 110 inch pound. So now to check if my rear wheel and axle is square, what I've got here is a tool that my father-in-law's made. So I've got this pin which inserts into the axle. And then the rod here lines up with the hole on your swing arm. I just need to see if this lines up the exact same on the other side or whether this rod goes forward or backwards and then I'll be able to turn these adjusters as per how the rod lines up with the hole on the swing arm. So on this side of the axle the hole is a bit bigger so I've just got this sleeve which inserts into the axle and 
want you to know the holes line up perfectly on both sides so that means my wheel and axle is nice and square so the torque on the rear axle is 60 to 65 foot pound yeah it's nice and tight locking pin certainly don't forget to reinstall the bolt on your rear shock Common sense tells me that is freaking tight. I've got to say I love the way the chain looks on the bike and uh, don't necessarily love the way the front sprocket looks. There's a bit of corrosion on that nut which I probably could have polished off but I do intend on getting a sprocket cover which I'll do in a later video. I just haven't decided on which one I'll buy yet. So just sitting there like that it doesn't look like there's much slack with the chain but I'll show you just looking at the chain slider there there's easily 40 mil, 40 to 50 mil of play. So I'm not overly concerned with how much slack it is. Yes, I know when I lower the bike and sit on it, that's gonna take up a bit more tension on the chain, but uh, I think that there's plenty of slack there. So that is the chain conversion done and dusted on my Sportster 72, and I couldn't be happier with how it looks. Really makes the bike look kick-ass and old school. I know it does look a little bit funny at the moment with the square cam cover, but as I mentioned in the next video, I'll be shaving down another cam cover which I'll reinstall on the bike. And I'm not gonna put the exhaust back on the bike just yet as I need to replace that cam cover. Also, I will be getting a sprocket cover which ties in a lot better with the style of the bike. But if you were wondering why did I get rid of the belt and go with a chain? Well, the answer is simple. Belts are for pants. Yeah, belts are for pants. That's it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.